Hello, I am Dr. T.K. Swami, Surgical Gastroenterologist, Senior Consultant in the Department of Surgical Gastroenterology, Valley Hospital, Erode. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use a spatula in a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. In laparoscopic cholecystectomy, we usually use the monopolar hook, Maryland. If it is a difficult case, we use harmony scalpel. Otherwise, we don't use the harmony scalpel. The spatula we are using usually in the gallbladder bed dissection. Some people use only hook, not the spatula. But in this video, I will show you how to use the spatula from the beginning to the end. In electrosurgery, if the tip of the instrument is very small, it will only cut even if you use the coagulation current. For example, if you use the tip of the Maryland, it will only cut, it will not coagulate. If you use the body of the instrument, that is the beak of the instrument or the back of the Maryland, it will coagulate because the surface area is more. The hook has got a smaller surface area. Even if you want to coagulate, it will only cut because the surface area is very small. Whereas the spatula has got a wider surface area, it coagulates in a better way than a hook. Another important point you have to remember is, when you are using a hook, if there is a little bit of bleeding, what you do? You turn the hook and use the knuckle to coagulate. If it is not getting coagulated, what you do? You just remove the hook and then get inside the Maryland or a bipolar. So you need to exchange the instrument. But when you are using a spatula, this exchange of instrument is not necessary most of the time. Suppose if there is a bigger bleeding, yes, you have to use bipolar, no other go. Because the um, spatula also will not control a bigger bleeding. But this is better, definitely better than a hook whenever there is a little bit of bleeding. In total mesorectal excision, initially we were using the hook for dissection. Of late, we started using spatula for a dissection and we feel it, we do it in a better way. We can do it a little faster than we were using hook. That's why we started using the same um, principle in lab cholecystectomy also and we found that it is very useful and it might be useful to you also. This patient is a 58 year old female. She is a known diabetic, hypertensive and ischemic heart disease patient. She was an antiplatelet agent. She developed acute cholecystitis one month ago and she was treated conservatively. Now again this is the second episode we are planning laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Routinely we use four ports, 2 10 mm and 2 5 mm. Periumbilical and the subsivide will be the 10 mm and the other two will be 5 mm. Let us get into the video and see. The laparoscopic cholecystectomy is usually done in three major steps. Number one is adhesolysis. Number two is the callous triangle dissection. Three is the gallbladder bed dissection. Among this, the most important is the callous triangle dissection because majority of the complications they occur only in the callous triangle dissection. That doesn't mean adhesolysis and gallbladder bed dissection are not important. They are also important. We have uploaded a separate video for adhesolysis in laparoscopic cholecystectomy. I have given the link below. You can have a look if you are interested. First we will see the adhesolysis. In adhesolysis, the most important is you must find out the cleavage between the two tissues, that is the liver on the fat and the gallbladder on the fat. You should not go either into the gallbladder or into the liver. You can see if there I am going in the wrong plane, you have to come one layer above. This type of coagulation is better done with the spatula. This patient was an anti-platelet agent, so I want to be little on the coagulation mode. I kept the wattage at 30. Usually we keep at 20 or 25 only. Now I have come closer to the gallbladder. You must find out where is the white line. The white line is a cleavage between the two tissues, namely gallbladder and the fat. Once you find out the cleavage, you can start dissecting in that line. Now 
The gallbladder is fully visible, so it can be retracted. It is retracted towards the right shoulder of the patient. Now, the traction and the counter-traction is important. The traction must be applied very close to the point of dissection. You should not leave too much of fat on the gallbladder. If you are leaving too much, then you are cutting more vessels in the fat. If you have the right cleavage, you will have less vessels and the bleeding will not be there. So first you must find out where is the cleavage. Once you find out, you can keep cutting. See the window is seen clearly, you can cut through. Again you hold closer to the area of dissection. See I am almost in the white line. That is the cleavage. Still the Hartman's pouch is not seen. You have to go still lower down. The gallbladder retraction is not adequate. So the grasping forceps has to be migrated lower down. This one single step will bring the Hartman's in front of the eyes. You see, the Hartman's is seen very clearly. Now you can dissect. You yourself should not retract with your left hand and operate. Both your hands must be free. Only the assistant must retract the gallbladder. See, I am using the tip of the spatula like a hook. If you use the tip of the spatula, it will only cut. For cutting, you need to keep the tissue under tension. See, I am using the spatula like a finger. Go closer. If the tension is not adequate, you have to migrate again your left hand towards the area of dissection. See, the tension is not adequate. Again, go closer. Then keep the tissue under tension. Then it cuts easily. For coagulation, it is not necessary. Tension is not necessary. But for cutting, it's very important. If the tension is not adequate, go closer. Now the Hartman's is well seen. That completes the adhesolysis. Next step is the callus triangle dissection. You have to cut only the peritoneum, not more than that. Just one millimeter. Go again posteriorly, cut only the peritoneum, nothing else. Go underneath the peritoneum, then push it. You should not push too much, you should not pass pointing. That you should not do. I just will demonstrate that is pass pointing. Going beyond your control. That should not happen anywhere. You must have a good control of the instrument. This is very, very important, especially when you do anterior obstruction. Now here, I'm cutting only the peritoneum. By doing this, this will widen the hepatocystic triangle. This is the first step in the callus triangle dissection. Just only the peritoneum. Now take the Maryland. Maryland is the best instrument to dissect in between the cystic duct and the artery because you can take tissues in small increments and then coagulate. Dissect in between very easily. Take all the fibro fatty tissue. In between the duct and the artery, you will get a vessel called a H vessel. That is the commonest vessel which gets injured. If it gets injured, you will be forced to coagulate the cystic artery before getting the critical view of safety. Now there is a cleavage. You should not 
keep a pushing behind you should not do that come behind then take away all the fibro fatty tissue coagulate take away small increments bit by bit you have to coagulate and then take now we go anteriorly you will be able to come you will be able to create the window clearly now you have to lengthen both cystic duct and the artery this is very important Now I have taken the spatula again. I want to dissect the cystic plate to create the critical view of safety. You need to develop two spaces, one above the artery and one below the artery, and two structures. There is the cystic artery and the cystic duct. Two spaces and two structures. You must remember. Now you have, there is a big node sitting on the cystic artery. You have to dissect, otherwise if you apply the clip, the clip might get loosened. You have to dissect the node from lateral to medial, not from medial to lateral. Now, now I am keeping the spatula with the concavity downwards. Now it will be easy to dissect it. If you keep the concavity downwards, move it down, you can see another vessel coming from the cystic artery to the cystic duct. You should not divide this with the hook or a spatula, that might bleed. The best instrument for that is the Maryland. Just I want to show the critical view of safety, but still the gallbladder has to be dissected up. One third of the gallbladder is better if you dissect before ligating. There is a little bit of fibrous tissue around the cystic duct. We have to fill it. We have to take away all the fat, all fibrous tissue. Leave only the duct. You can see the duct clearly. Little bit of fibrous tissue. Now you take that vessel, small vessel, coagulate it and it will get snapped. Still there is little bit of fibro fatty tissue that can also be removed. For this the best instrument is the Maryland. Now the length is adequate and you can clip them. You can either put a clip or you can suture. Whatever you are comfortable you can do. Just for demonstration I am putting clips only use two clips on the patient side and one clip on the specimen side. When you are applying the clip you have to see posteriorly the camera person must come and show you so that you don't hold anything else. That's very important. The second clip has to be close to the first one. The third clip has to be a little away so that it is easy to cut. Apply the clip and push up. Come little above and then apply so that there is little gap. This is for the third clip for the artery. See I kept the curvature down so that there is little space. I just want to increase the space there. You keep the curvature down, the space will be more. Now you can cut the vessel. You have to cut the vessel first. If you cut the duct first, sometimes the vessel might get avulsed. So it is better to cut the vessel first. Leave a little bit of tissue beyond the clip so that the clip doesn't slip. Now comes the gallbladder bed dissection. Gallbladder bed dissection is similar to the adhesolysis only. You have got only two tissues that is the gallbladder and the liver. Here again you have to find out the cleavage that is the 
white line between the two tissues. Once you find the cleavage, then you keep on developing that cleavage. You should not get into the liver, you should not get into the gallbladder. See, that is the cleavage. Keep developing that cleavage. Hold the gallbladder close to the area of dissection again. Then you can keep the tissue under tension. Now you see the tissue is tensed up and use the tip of the instrument now. Here the majority of the work is done by the left hand. It is keeping the tissues under tension. Even if there is a little bleeding, coagulate it. Don't allow the blood or the bile to trickle down. Now you see the tissue is not under tension there. You see, I feel it a little difficult. I am moving with the right hand because the tension is not there. See, I am getting into the liver. You have to go one layer up. That is the right cleavage. See with the tension how the dissection is easy. In gallbladder bed dissection, the left hand does most of the job. Only last fringe of tissue. You should not be in a hurry to pull it out. If you pull it will tear the glycens capsule. Use the tip of the spatula to divide. That's the last bit of tissue. See before dividing that there is any structure behind. And then divide. That completes the see the liver bed whether there is any bleeding or not. So call the fluid. We usually take the gallbladder out with a specimen bag. This is an ordinary polythene bag. Check inside the back. We usually divide and suck out all the bile. The most important is the assistant holding the lower edge of the back. Otherwise the bile might drop down into the peritoneal cavity. Suck out all the fluid so that the removal is easier. If the gallbladder is very thick you can cut and take it. Hold the bag, both the ends, leave the tissues. You have to hold nicely. You have to hold the bag nicely. You have to come and hold it. Otherwise, it will get torn. Then pull it into the tenement trocar and you have to remove the stones before pulling it. Use the ovum forceps or sponge holding. Then you can remove the back. We routinely close all the tenement ports with port closure needle. We use number one ethylon. We usually we remove the choka. Generally, you will be able to put a wider stitch. So catch hold of the thread and then pull it out. Just tight. You don't tighten it too much. This is the periumbilical port. Pull out the trocar, then push the needle, pull it back, you will get the loop. Push and pull back, you get the loop. Use it to hold. Take wider bites. You have to be careful because the needle is very sharp. We are not going to use any drain for this patient because the dissection was very clean. So that completes the surgery. Thanks for watching this video. It is not necessary that you should use only one instrument from the beginning to the end. Every instrument has got its own advantages and disadvantages. 
If you are comfortable with hook, no harm in using it. Ultimately, doing the surgery safely is more important. For that, selection of the right instrument at the right time is mandatory. Start using spatula in some of your cases. I'll be happy to answer your queries. Thank you very much.